Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Jesse Warden, we're going to talk about asynchronous testing today doing callbacks. Callbacks are a very normal way to handle user interactions in the browser. So when you click on something, it will call a function. So you say, hey, whenever somebody clicks on this button, call this function for me and just let me know, you know, the mouse event so I can know where they clicked, what button they actually clicked on. Thanks. I appreciate it. And so that's the callback mechanism. You also use callbacks for all other things like geolocation stuff. There is a movement to using promises, but callbacks are still big and strong. There's a lot of people who love their simplicity, very simple to write. Functional programmers have found ways to wrap them so they actually return values. There's some people that believe nested callbacks are actually readable. They're not actually the whole callback hell thing that promises we're supposed to solve. What's wrong? Programming, gaming, fitness, Jesse Morgan. Testing callbacks is reasonably straightforward. Every single callback in Node follows the main contract of you call some method, do something, and you pass either whatever your params are, and then you pass a callback. This callback is a function because whatever you're doing in here is going to take a while. Could be loading a file, could be going to a server. It's something that you don't want to stop your Node code from running. Part of Node's operation is input output, and it doesn't block that. If it takes a while, it'll do the work and then call your callback function when it's done. So your JavaScript can continue on operating as normal, but if you have asynchronous operations, you can pass in callbacks. A simple, easy pattern to understand in JavaScript. So we're going to use that today and test for the existence of a text file. We'll import the fs library in node. FS stands for file system. Although it has synchronous operations, we're going to do the best practice of doing everything async. And we'll do const read cal. We have a text file over here called cal.txt with a constant of yo in it. Put our callback in this function here. Callback is a function that we say, hey, when you are done reading the file, please call this function and give it the error, if any. And the second parameter will be the contents of the text file. Thank you. That's what this is. It's a higher order function, also known as a callback. Nothing magical. So we'll take the file system library and read file. The first parameter read file is your text file that you're trying to read or the file name. The second is the encoding, which usually is UTF-8 for all text. And the last parameter is the callback, which has the standard node error exception for the first parameter, if anything, or it's undefined if everything was good to go. And in our case, data for the second parameter. We'll pass in our callback here. We're just forwarding it along the way. We will export it out. Madu, Madu, King of Doritos. Madu, it's module exports. Speaking of Doritos, I haven't had those in forever. I should make that a cheat meal. We will import the read cow method. Require locally from that file. And we'll describe the index module strictly for visual alignment purposes. We'll then describe the recal method and speak it in English with me. It should work. Assuming the cal.txt file is there, this method should work. So we can do this in a couple ways. We're going to do it inline because that's what everyone in the JavaScript community, at least in the browser world, started doing. Then it leaked over to Node all over the place. So we're actually going to define an error function as the first parameter, which is the callback or a higher order function. We're passing read cow a function and saying, hey, dude, call this when you're done. All node functions pass an error, if anything, and the contents of the text file. Now, normally, whether this blows up or not, all Mocha functions in Jasmine, and I can't remember what tape does, they are synchronous. So they expect you to be done. This function will not sit around and wait for read cow to be done. So if recal takes a few seconds because it has to read a text file or if it was going to a web server, Mocha doesn't care. It says, as long as you don't throw an error, I'm successful. That's no good. We need to wait to see if reading the text file is successful or not. The way you do that in Mocha in Jasmine is you put a callback here. The most common one is called done. You can name this whatever you want. If you're feeling in a good mood like me, you could call it holla back, holla youngin. Woo -woo. We're just going to use done to differentiate the done from the callbacks of this. Done just means, hey... I'm Mocha. I know you're going to take a while to run your code. Whenever you're done, just let me know. Call this function, okay? Oh, by the way, if you pass anything into done, I'm going to assume it exploded. And when he means anything, he means anything. So you pass in a string, cow, a number, an error, 
whatever, it's considered a failure. So past nothing and done, that's considered a success. So let's validate our inputs first. This whole test is really validating that the contents themselves were in fact read. And the contents again are yo. So let's say contents should equal yo. Now that we've made our assertion, now we're done. So although your unit test should focus on testing one thing, in this case, the callback is actually testing the contents of it worked and then saying done from that. It actually could fail in two places. A, it read it incorrectly, or B, this never came back. And that's okay. All asynchronous Mocha tests default to two seconds. So you don't have to worry about waiting or writing timers. It already knows how to do all that for you. And you can override that later, and I'll show you how to do that. Let's run our unit test for it and see if it works, and lo and behold, it does. There's one thing missing, though, and the whole concept of node is that the first parameter should not exist. So although we did get contents, maybe we had an error. Maybe the callback was bad. Maybe our wrapper function did something cray. Who knows? So let's test for that as well. So we'll say should not have an error at our callback. Now we can't use the should syntax for this, although we wrote it here. And that's because you can't should on something that doesn't exist. So we're gonna use the expect syntax for that. We're gonna copy pasta coding FTW. But instead of this, we are going to say expect error to not exist. We don't want to exist, it shouldn't be there. Rerun our tests. So it doesn't have an error and the contents are what we were expecting. That verifies both inputs and we're good to go. That is the basics of testing asynchronous code in JavaScript, specifically around callbacks using the done callback and for callbacks in Node or callbacks in any other language really. Checking that there's no errors and that the contents are what you expect them to be. So if it gives you an idea of how to test callbacks effectively on just the basics, don't forget to subscribe. If you got any other questions, hit me up in the comments. I will answer you. Again, my name is Jesse Warden, here to help you.